we'll take the first question from the WhatsApp. I am Umair from Sri Lanka. I am a student. The government of Sri Lanka has not given the permission for the burial of Muslims who die due to COVID-19. What should we Muslims do for this unjustified case? Till now, more than 100 Muslims were cremated that is burnt. A similar question is asked. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hussein Mahmood. I am a student studying in a local university. After March, the Sri Lankan government decided to cremate the COVID-19 victim's body regardless of the consent from the family. Our politicians are trying to amend the decision, but we cannot. We want to raise this issue internationally. We want Sheikh to speak about this issue. The question posed by both the questioner were regarding the decision taken by the Sri Lankan government several months earlier in the month of March and April 2020 that all those who die because of COVID-19 or they die after testing positive COVID-19, all of them should be cremated, should be burnt irrespective of their religion, irrespective of the consent of the family. And this decision was mainly taken by the government according to me, was mainly to act against the Muslim. <coughs> and as you will be aware that the population of the Muslims in Sri Lanka, it is approximately 2.2 to 2.5 million. According to the 2012 census, 9.7% of the population of Sri Lanka were Muslims. Now they'll be somewhere close to 11% in the population in Sri Lanka. About 11% would be Muslims. And Christians were 7.4% in the 2012 census. They'll be close to 7.5% now. Both put together would be 18.5% of the population of Sri Lankan, they normally bury after they die because of their, of their religious teachings, whether it be the Muslims or whether it be the Christians. The majority of the Sri Lankan, they are Buddhist. 70.2% of the population of Sri Lanka are Buddhist and 12.6% are Hindus. And both of these communities, they cremate after they die. I personally feel that this decision taken by the Sri Lankan government was mainly to harass the minorities, that is the Muslims and the Christians. And though the Muslim politicians, they did try their level best and they approached the government and they tried to convince them, but the government said that it is not our decision, we are not interfering, it has been taken by the health authorities. They have told that the best to do after the person dies after being tested positive for COVID-19, the safest is to cremate them, to burn them. So we aren't interfering with the decision. It is not our decision. It is a decision of the health authorities and we cannot do anything about it. Later on, there were many Muslim lawyers who got together and they even filed a petition in the Supreme Court in the highest authority of law in Sri Lanka but unfortunately, it was rejected. Now, when we analyze, Sri Lanka is the only country in the world amongst more than 200 countries which, have, which has got this unique rule that anyone who dies because of COVID-19 should be cremated nowhere else in the world. And when we check the WHO requirements, they say once a person dies, because of COVID-19, it doesn't make a difference whether you bury them or whether you cremate them. Both are safe. So from where do the health authorities of Sri Lanka get this idea that cremating or burning the dead body after they have been tested positive of COVID-19 is safer and better? 
I feel it is just a harassment of the man. There is no medical or scientific proof at all that a dead body after being positive of COVID-19 and they're dying because of COVID-19, they should be cremated. It is not at all a scientific fact. There is no medical proof at all for it. In fact, scientifically, if we compare the difference between cremation and burial, and let me tell you that majority of the people in the world after dying, they are being buried because the Christians are approximately 2.5 billion in the world. The Muslims are more than 2 billion. The, the Christians are approximately 31% in the world, and the Muslims are more than 25%. Both put together, only the Christians and Muslims they are more than 56% of the world population and many others are also buried. So approximately two thirds of the world population, they are buried. If you compare the pros and cons between the burial of a dead body and a cremation of a dead body, point number one, when we cremate or burn the body after the person has died, there is a lot of pollution. So cremation and burning the dead body causes multiple times more pollution. It pollutes the area. There is pollution. As compared to burial, there is no pollution. Alhamdulillah. Number two, when a dead body is buried, uh, when a dead body is cremated, for burning the dead body, a lot of wood has to be burned because of which millions of trees have to be chopped. In India alone, there are millions of trees every year. They are killed and they are chopped only because they require wood for burning the dead body. So the forest is destroyed because of cremation, because of burning the dead body. Whereas in burial, the forest is retained. The more greenery is retained as compared to cremation. Point number three, when a dead body is buried, the bones they disintegrate, the body gets disintegrated and scientifically today, science tells us that whatever is present in the human body, the components, to a lesser or greater extent, the same components also present in the earth. So as it said in Islam, from earth we come, and to the earth we return. So the thing is that it is more scientific to bury a body as compared to cremation. Point number four, when we bury a body, the body disintegrates, the bones disintegrate, and it makes that land where the dead body is buried more fertile, which is not the case when a body is burnt, it turns into ashes. When we bury the body, it gives more manure. The earth gets more fertile. There's more greenery. There's more forest. It's much better for the environment. Point number five. The land where you bury, the same land can be recycled. Once you burn the wood in burying a dead body, that wood cannot be used, it turns into ashes. So in burial, it can be recycled. And point number six, it is very cheap. There is no cost required. One, if you buy the land and most of the graveyards, they are big, they are bought hundreds of, they are present in hundreds of years. The same land can be used after a few years. Whereas in cremation, in burning, it's very expensive. You have to buy wood. It's more expensive to burn a body as compared to burying a body. So scientifically, I've just mentioned six benefits of burying as compared to cremation. Coming back to the question that what the Sri Lankan government has done just to harass the minorities, especially the Muslims and the Christians, what action should be taken? Number one, what the Muslims of Sri Lanka have done, they've approached the political party, is one of the good things they should do. But unfortunately, because the Muslims are in minority, they are not as a very good force in terms of convincing the government of being as a vote bank. Point number two, we should go 
to the legal authorities of the country. And that's what the Muslims in, in Sri Lanka have done. And according to me, though Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan Muslims are minority, compared to other countries, they are quite united, alhamdulillah. So they got together and they filed a case in the Supreme Court. But what happens is that when the government is in majority, and if it's against the Muslims who are in minority, many a times the law supports the government in most of the countries. And here, as I mentioned, that the Buddhists, they are 70.2%, along with, along with the Hindus, they are 12.6%. Both put together, they are about 83%. So because of this, the Supreme Court, they declined the petition. Third thing that should be done is there should be more awareness that should be made throughout, not only in Sri Lanka, but throughout the world. Because if the world comes to know, surely they can be pressure from outside. Seeing the situation now, what I believe, the best that can be done is there should be pressure from the Muslim countries. And Alhamdulillah, there are some Muslim countries which have got active and I've been, touch, I've been in touch with some of the religious people in Sri Lanka. I've been in touch with some of the politicians also in Sri Lanka. And Alhamdulillah, also in some of the NGOs in UK. And there are Muslims who are trying to see to it that the Muslims unite. And this issue also, inshallah, will be brought very soon to the OIC. That is the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. But the negative factor is that the Muslims, unfortunately, throughout the world, we aren't united. The Muslims today, about 57 countries in the world, their population is majority, they are Muslims. More than 50% of the population of 57 countries in the world, about 27% of the countries in the world, they have a Muslim majority. And the Muslim population in the world is more than 2 billion. More than 25% of the world population today are Muslims. But unfortunately today, the Muslims are united. Many of the Muslim countries, they're fighting among themselves. A neighboring Muslim country is fighting with the other neighboring Muslim country for their personal benefit because of which the Ummah is not united. If the Muslim Ummah was united like it was there in the past, we had one leadership, then the situation would have been different. Now, because the Muslim Ummah is not united and some of the Muslim countries don't want to interfere, they say, okay, it's not concerning ourselves, it's regarding some others, it is totally against the Islamic principle. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that the Muslims are like one body. And if one body feels pain, then everyone rushes to see to it that they take care. So we Muslims should be like one body, parts of different body, and we should help each other. And as the Quran says, in Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number two, that help one another in birr and taqwa, in righteousness, and in good deeds, in virtue. We Muslims should stand up together. And internationally, if all the Muslims get together and object to the injustice that's being done in Sri Lanka against the minorities, against the Muslim, and against the Christian, then inshallah, there are high chances that the Sri Lankan government would change the law. Because there is no scientific evidence at all what they're saying, that because the health authorities are saying that's the reason they want to burn the bodies of all the COVID-19 people who have been tested positive. And but natural in Islam and Christianity, it is against our faith to burn a body. In Islam and Christianity, a body after death should be buried. And we hope that even the Christian countries all over the world, they unite together and they take, they take action or they put pressure on Sri Lanka to change this unjustified law. Another thing that can be done is that we should, we Muslims should use the social media to make this thing known throughout the world. And inshallah, very shortly, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I myself would be leasing and post Facebook post because my daughter, she had exams. My, my youngest daughter, Rujda, 
she's very good with the pen. So I all, most of the time I tell her to draft post on such issues. So she just finished her examination of the second last year where she is studying Islamic studies in bachelors. So inshallah, in the next couple of days, you'll find a series of posts talking about this issue so that there is more awareness in the Muslim Ummah. And I request the Muslim all over the world that to see to it that they make it aware to the people all across the world the injustice that has been done by the Sri Lankan government so that the people, if the Muslims get together and they make it aware, so inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may the Sri Lankan government change the unjustified stance and allow the people who have died because of COVID-19 to choose whether they want to be buried or whether they want to be cremated.